I'm doing sixth grade and it's a poetry unit. We're gonna do bell ringers every day. So the first one would be like basically what kind of poetry do you know about or what poets have you heard of? I would just have them write it down. They would have like a bell ringer notebook that they would use every day. So they would do that for a few minutes and then we would uh, put our desk in a circle so we can like have a good group discussion and just talk about what they know, maybe like what they want to know with poetry. And this would be um, a good time for the teacher to like gauge their, their level of knowledge on poetry because in sixth grade, some students might know a lot, but some might not know anything. So that would be my time to just see what they know and what maybe they want to study if they have an interest in um, a certain poet. The next day, I would expose them to some famous poets that I want them to know about, just like classics, like Emily Dickinson, uh, Shakespeare, Robert Frost. I just picked a few that I wanted to do for this, but I could probably do more <coughs> if I was actually doing this. So I would just have them take notes on um, some factual information on them, and then I would give examples of like what their maybe most well-known poems are. And I've included some of those. I did The Road Not Taken by mm -hmm. Robert Frost. We would um, read that, do a group discussion about it. On day three, we talk about themes in poetry. I think this is important because it helps students like analyze poetry well if they can pull out different themes, common themes in poetry, love, nature, um, death. We would talk about that. I'd have examples for them of certain themes in poetry, maybe poets that stick to certain themes, like Frost really talks about na nature a lot. So we would discuss that. And then I would have them do a short homework assignment where they need to pick a poem that they like and bring it in. Um, and they would have to analyze it, like write a few sentences about it, talk about the theme. I just made a little rubric for it just that they identified the theme, that they explained it, and that they used proper grammar and spelling. This would lead into day four. Um, we would talk about poetry terminology, the basics like alliteration. I have examples, they would use their textbook. So here's an example of alliteration. After I said what it was, they could take notes on this. Um, and we would go through a lot of terms they have listed like imagery, allusions, metaphors, similes, like the basics of poetry that they need to know to be able to study poetry. Um, and then we would use the poems that they brought in from the day before, and we would analyze those. So they talked about the themes for their homework, but I would have a document camera and they could put their poem up that they like printed out, and we would pull out, <coughs> okay, let's look at the imagery in this poem. Let's find alliteration. Um, personification, all the terms that we discussed during the day, that's what I would use for the classwork and um, to take it a step farther. You <coughs> can actually see examples of it. Day five <coughs> is when I would um, talk about different types of poems. I had books and I would have brought them in if I knew I was presenting. But the first one was called Falling Down the Page, a book of list poems. And um, it was just a book of poems that were like written in a like not typical way. So I wanted to introduce this to students to show them that poetry can be written in a variety of ways. And then there's also another book, it's called Lemonade and Other Poems Squeezed from a Single Word. Um, that's just another example of poetry that's not as typical. It's not your typical poetry. The illustrations sometimes are incorporated um, and it's more creative and it would probably grab their attention more. So if they didn't really you know, like learning about Shakespeare, they might like this more and it would interest them. <coughs> um, we would learn about like, poetry structure, such as um, sonnets. I have an example of a Shakespeare sonnet and also um, poetry in blank verse. This is the sonnet. It's sonnet 130 by Shakespeare. And then this one is blank verse and it comes from um, the Falling Down the Page book. In the book, the title, Things to Do Through a Pencil, is like illustrated so it looks like a pencil. And then I'll just read this. It's B sharp, 
wear a slick yellow suit and a pink top hat, tap your toes on the tabletop, listen for the right rhythm, and dance a poem across the page. So it's a little bit elementary, but it's something that I want to show them that, you know, if you don't like Shakespeare, you have other options, maybe something more um, <coughs> creative. So the book really adds to <coughs> the effect of that, but I had to type it out to turn it in. Day six, I introduce poetry with different subjects. The bell ringer for that day is, um, it's kind of a trick question. I want to ask the students what subject is poetry, like does poetry fall into? And I'd expect most of them to say um, English, language arts, reading, but actually poetry can be science, history, art, or even math. Um, my black teacher showed us a book about like poetry and math, and I didn't use that, but I would probably incorporate that into my classroom because it helps students learn the basic math concepts, but also um, it's just another way to incorporate creative poetry into the classroom. So after we did the folk scene activity and discussed you know, that there's more than the one answer, I would show them two books that I have, America at War. It's a book about <coughs> the war through like the current war. Um, and it's just poetry about war. And I think students can maybe relate to that if they know like someone in the army who might like studying that. If they don't like studying Shakespeare, I wanna give all the students um, like an equal chance to relate to the poetry that we're studying. So maybe they'll like the war poetry or the math poetry. The other book is called Side by Side. It's a poetry book and every page is illustrated with classic artwork and then a poem. <coughs> and then the poem is also written in another language. So it's a really cool book. Um, I wish I could have brought it in, but I don't have it with me. And we would just discuss some of the poems in that book. I would pass them around or use my document camera to show them. Because to get the full effect, you need to see like the picture, the poem, the two languages. Um, and then lastly, day seven, which goes into day eight, they would do a small research project. And it's a project where they pick a poet that interests them. They um, research the life of the poet. So like the biography, they would write um, about a page or two about that alone. They would then pick three poems that are maybe most famous, recognized by the po by uh, people today, and they would include those into their project, but they would pick one that they're gonna analyze. So all the skills that we discuss, like finding alliteration, personification, rhyme scheme, all of that, they would use with their one poem of choice where they would analyze the poem like in a more literature form. Um, and then they would be expected to uh, give a short presentation on their project. So after they get to work on it in class for two days, um, they would present for two days and they would be expected <coughs> to have a visual aid and it could be one of their choice because I wouldn't want to make students do a poster board. If they want to bring in a book, that would be fine, or something else. So they would present short biography information on their poet, talk about like the themes in their poetry, um, the poems that they picked out, the one that they analyzed, and then show their visual aid. I have a rubric for that. The written paper, it's just like the organization, all the as aspects that are included, grammar, correctness. If they analyzed a poem, I would check that they correctly analyzed it. And then the oral presentation, that they understood their topic, that they presented it like loud and clearly, they spoke um, well, that they have their visual aid included. And I think that's it. Any questions?